Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. <laughs> um, because I got in trouble the last two weeks that I didn't say this, I'm going to say this for you, Paisley. God is good. And all the time. Thank you. I won't get in trouble this week again for that. <laughs> Um, just a couple announcements. A, we're super glad to have you here. Thank you for joining us, whether you are online, whether you're watching later, or listening on the radio, or you're here with us in person. We are so glad to have you today. Um, just a few announcements for this week. Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. Whoop, whoop. Um, starts at 9 a.m. and goes till 11.30 a.m. So if your kiddos are coming, bring them on in. If you haven't registered yet, please make sure you do that. Um, Senior High Youth Group, we are meeting tonight at 6 a.m. PM um, over at my house, we will have um, a game, food, and our devotion for the week. Um, we will not be meeting next week because of Father's Week, though, so mark that in your calendars. No youth group next week, but come tonight. Um, Salem Lunch Bunch is meeting on Thursday at 11 a.m. at Old School Cafe. This is for all women, um, so come and enjoy lunch with us. Summer Bible Study is meeting again this week at thurs on Thursday at 6 p.m. upstairs in the upper room. And finally, next week for Father's Day, we have our Father's Day breakfast. And I know the bulletin says 9 o'clock. Pam Fleck wanted me to let you guys know that it's at 8.45. So be there at 8.45 for some breakfast and fellowship with us. Thank you so much. And um, would you guys bow your heads to pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, so much for who you are, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we get to gather into your presence today, Jesus, to worship and honor you. You are so good, and it's so sweet to sit in your spirit and in your presence, Jesus, today. Would you allow us to have open ears, Lord, and open hearts to listen and hear from you, Father, and to listen to your word and to grasp that in our hearts. We praise you and thank you so much for who you are, and let us worship together. Amen. Most unusual not to have uh, Pastor Jeff speaking at this time. Anyway, would you uh, please stand with me for the call to worship? Salvation comes from the Lord. That is the message we proclaim this morning, that in all things we know that this truth reigns. Let us rejoice in the Savior who broke down the boundaries between us to call us redeemed. Salvation comes from the Lord, and all the nations can receive it through faith. There is not one person who is out of reach for God's grace. Let us sing praise to the Savior who sees past divides and walls so that all nations who believe can be called children of God. Salvation comes from the Lord, and let us all rejoice because of it. Let us testify that all may receive the Lord's salvation, that all may be free if they believe. Let us find joy this morning, knowing that salvation is here for all who choose to receive it. Let us now sing our first hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, page 128.
Heather. Our choir has our special music at this time. All you little ones out there, would you like to come forward? Isabel has the children's moment for you. Good morning. Oh, this is loud. Hi, guys. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Oh, I love your shoes. They're so fun. I like your shoes, baby. They're purple. They're blue? Oh, they're new. Yeah. They're so pretty. I love them. They're How are you guys doing this morning? Good Uh-huh. How are you doing this morning? Good? Yeah? Tired? Have you been playing too much this summer? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you guys know what these are? What are these? Have you been playing with these a lot this summer? When well, you've been swimming? Do you use these, Stella? No, you don't use these. She's a pro swimmer. She doesn't need these. Here, can you guys put these on? See if you can fit them onto you. Here, try and fit these onto you. 
They're a little small, aren't they? I got these from Walmart. Look, still, it fits in. That's really good. Yeah. What do we use floaties for? To float if we don't know how to swim? Are they important? If, if I can't swim and I don't know how to swim, are the floaties pretty important for me? What happens if I don't use floaties? You could drown. That's not good, is it? We don't want to do that, right? So we use floaties so we can swim, right, before we learn how to do it ourselves. But they also are really important, too, for when maybe we're in danger. Have you ever seen a shipwreck before? And if somebody's shipwrecked, they throw out a lifesaver, right, or a big floaty that they can cling on to so they can float. Yeah. So floaties are pretty important in the summer, especially when we're swimming and we might not know how to swim. But I have another question for you. What have we been talking about in church? What has Pastor Jeff been teaching us about? Do we know? Do we remember? About God. We've been learning a lot about God. What else have we been learning about? It's a man. His name starts with J. Jesus. But also his name is jo Jonah. Good job. And what happened to Jonah? Jonah got swallowed by a big, a big whale or a big fish. And what we've been learning about Jonah is there's a common theme. Can you say theme? Theme. And Jonah, and it's about salvation. Say salvation. No. <laughs> and in Jonah, chapter 2, verse 7 through 9, it says, As my life was fading away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to him, to your holy temple. Those who cherish worthless idols abandon their faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the th voice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Can you say that? Salvation belongs to the Lord. That wasn't very loud. Can you say it one more time? Salvation belongs to the Lord. Good job. So what we can learn through Jonah is that just like our floaties can save us from drowning, and just like the big lifesaver things that we see in the ocean, the big life jackets, can save us from drowning. Do you want to hold this? Uh huh. Just like they can save us from drowning, Jesus and God saves us too. That salvation is them saving us from our sin or from the things that we've been doing wrong, from our disobedience. Just like Jonah disobeyed God, sometimes we do too, right? Mm -hmm. And so just like our lifesavers save us, God saves us too from drowning and from being separated from him. Can we fold our hands and close our eyes and pray together? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for saving us. Thank you for being our salvation and for giving us strength, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would keep each one of these little ones safe, Jesus, and allow them to see you in a new way this week, Jesus. Thank you for saving us. Amen. All right, you guys can go sit down. All right, thank you, Isabel, as well. The little ones, too. Join me now in the affirmation of grace. Father God, today we recognize that salvation is not based on our actions, but on the grace you give. Let us affirm that grace is based on your nature and love for your people, and we know it is received by faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. We know our sins have separated us from you, but your grace, by the gift of your Son, brings us back into your family. Thank you for your son and the grace you showed through him. Everyone now, let us say, Lord, let us receive your grace by putting our faith in your son, Jesus. After our offering prayer, I'm issuing a gentle reminder. Would everyone please then remain standing for the pre-message him. Our ushers to come forward at this time for giving of God's tithes and offerings.
Father, that's what we want to do this morning is just give thanks to you. Thank you for salvation first, for your son Jesus on the cross. Thank you for provision next, providing us with an eternal life and providing us with the means to manage this life. And thank you for this church and all the churches that glorify you this morning, that your message is being proclaimed. We thank you for all that you do in each and every one of us this morning. And we thank you for your life that you have poured into us, a more abundant life. And as a church, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Three forty four. Grace greater than our sin. Very well. You may be seated. At this time, Pastor Jeff has our morning message entitled, A Message Proclaimed. Question, do you think Jonah gave up eating fish after this event? Oh, yeah, I'd have a hard time uh, eating, some, eating a fish after this experience. But I don't like fish anyway, so that's okay. Uh, 
Actually, I think the more theological question is in regards to VeggieTales, that, that old cart cartoon. VeggieTales always proclaim that Jonah was in the belly of the fish writing his scriptures, or writing uh, Jonah chapter 2. And so for a long time, I literally thought, this was before I had an education, that Jonah would have been in the belly of the fish writing these words, but I could never figure out how he got a light in there. So, uh, no. Would you pray with me? Father God, we come before you this morning knowing that your grace, your mercy, your power overcomes all when we respond to you. So Lord, this morning, let us hear your words. Let us hear the message that you have for us so that we can take with it and that we can understand what you're building within us, the seeds that you're planting within us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It was August of 1998, and I can till, still tell you exactly where I was sitting on this particular Sunday morning. This particular Sunday morning, I had, it was probably the first time I had been in church in a long time. And I was not there because I wanted to be there. I was there because God wanted me to be there. And I had struggled. And I remember what the pastor was preaching that morning. To this, I, I, I've been in services, I've been in, you know, a thousand services now throughout my whole life. I've heard thousands of messages. I've given so many messages. But this one I know for sure, and I can remember most of the content word for word. And the pastor that morning was preaching from the story of Peter. And I remember him talking about how Peter was a wayward person in most of his life. And how Peter at one point would walk on water and the next point would sink. And how Peter at one point would cut the ear off of a soldier and the next point deny Jesus. How Peter was a man of ambition and fear all at the same time. How he was one who said, yes, I will feed the sheep. But he was hiding on the day of resurrection. And I can tell you at that moment how God was speaking to me. I can tell you, and I'm not trying to make this morning about me, but I can tell you how God was speaking to me. Because at that moment, as I was hearing these words about this man who seemed to have it right, then seemed to have it wrong all the time. The tears started flowing down my face. I was sitting in the balcony of Eastside Church listening to Pastor Kerry share about Peter, and tears were flowing down. And, and I'll tell you, I'm not a crier in public. I don't even like to share my own emotions all the time. It, it it's, to me, seems like a weakness at times. And so here I was in the midst of this message, this beautiful message, and I had been so far away from God, and that takes a hard thing to say when you grew up in a church and in a house of a pastor. And I knew God, or I, I knew who God was all my life, but I never knew God. I knew He was real, but I never had that relationship. And so in, in my life, I was now going through a pretend faith with God. And because of situations in my life, and I'm not going to go into them because I don't want to glorify those things, but I had, was so far away from God sitting in this sanctuary and hearing God speak to me about being a wayward person. But by the end of the message, and, and, and Pastor Kerry talking about this idea that Jesus went to Peter and said, I still have a plan for you. He opened it up and he said, if anyone needs to respond to God, come down to the altar. At that time in, in churches, uh, there's still some of them, they had railings at the front. They had an altar. And 
I found myself responding, walking down the balcony steps, down to the, to, to the front and just bawling and giving my life over truly for the first time to Jesus Christ. As I got up this morning, that moment was on my mind. I wonder if Jonah stood on the, the, the shores after being vomited out of, from the fish with the same feeling. Knowing God was there, but being a part of his will was a different story. Jonah, we've been studying Jonah, this, this man who was a prophet of God and who had done great things for God and spoke for God, but truly was becoming a chicken for God. He truly was becoming somebody in, in his own life that, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I did the chicken thing. But that's truly what he had become. Because he didn't want to experience the will of God. But now he's on the seashore and he knows that he has to do it. And this morning I want to talk about Jonah chapter 3. Because Jonah chapter 3 is this beautiful passage. And, and folks, we get the story of Jonah about the whale or the fish. Or Jonah walking away. But Jonah chapter 3... Or, but Jonah chapter 3 is the whole theme of the book of Jonah. And it's God's mercy on people. So let's look at it uh, real quick with me. If you, if you got your scriptures, turn with me to Jonah chapter 3. If you want to read them up on the board, you can. Or up on the wall. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began on a, uh, by going a day's journey into the city proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off the royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people... And animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that he will not, or we will not perish. When God saw that they did and how, what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented. And did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Powerful words. Powerful message in this, uh, this morning. I want to show you three truths that come out of this scripture. That I think we all have to experience in our lives. The very first truth that I want you to see is God has an ultimate desire. And it is for us to be in a right relationship with him. Jonah chapter 3 starts off the way that Jonah chapter 1 starts off. Jonah chapter 1 starts off with this idea that God is, has a message for, for Nineveh. And he's, he calls upon Jonah. Look what verse 1 through 3 says in Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. I want to stop real quick. A second time. I don't know about you guys, and this is an amen moment for me in the service, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I am so glad that God uses second times, amen? I'm glad that sometimes second times aren't even enough. 
Sometimes God uses third times and fourth times and fifth times to get it in the thick skull of, of Jeff that says, hey, I really want you to be a part of my will. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to Nineveh, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. How awesome is that? The very first sign of mercy that we see here, that God has an ultimate decision or design on our lives to be in relationship with him. And because of this ultimate design, he doesn't just always keep it on the first time. He keeps coming after us, keeps coming after us, keeps coming after us. And this time, Jonah relents himself, changes his ways. And I love what it says in verse 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. No longer was Jonah going down. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Now he's going exactly where God wants him to go. His attitude has not changed. We'll talk about that next week. Sometimes our attitude doesn't change. We still begrudgingly do God's will, but God still keeps asking. God still keeps reaching. And that's what we see here within this, and that's what we see within mercy. God is a God who desires mercy in us and from us for others. I want you to see the second point this morning. Although God desires mercy, And God desires an ultimate relationship with us. You have to hear the message that he proclaims. And we skip over this. We don't like to talk about it. Churches don't like to offend anymore. God has an expiration date for all of us. Whether it's through the ground or through the rapture or whatever it is, God has an expiration date on our lives. Just like in the message that he proclaimed to Nineveh. Let's look at uh, the the message here in verse number 4. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. 40 more days. God had set it out there. He's given Nineveh what he doesn't always give us. We don't know the time or the hour or the place. But he's saying to Nineveh, hey, Nineveh, You only have 40 more days. As as Christians and as church people, we don't always like to hear that there's an expiration date. But there is. There is a point where we have to respond to God. There is nowhere in Scripture that I can find where we get to go through all of our life living it out the way we want to, separated from God. Rejecting his, his ways, his means, his will. And then stand before God at the very end. And God sits there and says, okay, now are you going to choose me? He doesn't do that. We don't get to stand in heaven after living a life of hell. And say, can you let me in? God sits there and says, I'm giving you your chance now. I might give you a second, a third, or a fourth, but there is an expiration date. And I love what the Ninevites do. They have 40 days, the Bible says, 40 days, and on day one, they respond. The Ninevites, verse 5, the Ninevites believed God. They heard the word of God, they heard the message, and they had faith faith as fast a fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth and I'm going to talk about sackcloth in a minute they believed they heard the word of God and they believed I wonder how many of us take a long time to hear the word of God to believe Romans 10, 17 tells us this. 
Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Now, that's a lot of words. I love the, I think it's the ESV or the New King James says it this way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That simple. I'm going to gain faith by hearing the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is cast out and it can never return void. And so we see scripture. We see the importance of what Jonah was pr proclaiming. 40 days. 40 days. And some people say, well, God didn't have a repentance idea involved in that yet. It's not until later he does. Why is God going to warn somebody if he's not giving them an opportunity to change? That's what, that's what church is all about. That's what messages are all about. That's what singing, praise, and worship. It's letting us know how God works and his will and letting us know that he has a desire for us if we change. Third point I want you to get this morning is God's mercy. The thing that we're talking about, the thing that brought Jonah to the shore, the thing that brings Ninevite to the message, the Ninevites to the message, God's mercy is received through our repentance. One of the hardest things, I don't know, and, and uh, we've got some pastors in here this morning, Pastor Larry, and maybe he's experienced this, and Pastor Clint, who uh, is with us this morning, and, and there's people who've experienced this. I know I have experienced this. One of the hardest things in churches today is we don't talk about repentance anymore. This need to change because we offend and, and the idea is we just need to stay the same and it's okay. God made you who you are. It's not, not true. God makes you who he wants you to be. It's up to us to, to change. And, and so when the Ninevites were pre presented with this message something happened in them they didn't just proclaim okay God loves us just the way we are we can stay the same no 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 the message was a message of repentance I told you that they put on sackcloth sackcloth was designed to give up all the, the niceties and all the luxuries and it was coarse and it was dark and it was a sign of repentance that I just want to connect and I want to be forgiven and I want to go back to the basics of God. And so here the king and the Ninevites all start to live a life of repentance within this, this and we don't know how long. And folks, repentance can be only for your people. It cannot be for your next people. If I repent, my kids don't always live under that repentance. Because 100 years, uh, uh, 100 years into the future, Nineveh will be gone because they have gone away from God. They are overcome and they are wiped out. But at that moment, they realized they wanted to get to God. That God was reaching out to them in repentance. And the Bible says in verse 8 through 10, it says this, but, the, but let the people, this is the king saying it, but let the people, animals, and, be, uh, and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Did you hear that? Let us put on a sign of repentance and then let us repent. Give up our evil ways. Who knows, verse 9, God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. In verse 10, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Wow. Two things we see. 
They were afraid of perishing. They were fearful of dying. Do you know the only remedy for fear of dying and perishing? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So the first thing is they were afraid of it. The second thing, they responded to it through repentance. And then God relented, which means to change what he had planned through mercy. We don't see this as important all the time anymore. But the Bible makes clear If you want mercy, if you want grace, if you want salvation, repentance has to be at the heart of it. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leads no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. And how about Acts chapter 17, verses 30 through 31? In the past, God over, overlooked ignorance. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof to this to everyone by raising him from the dead. How is repentance in your language? That's the message that was proclaimed. Remember, even Jonah talked about it in chapter 2. Salvation comes from the Lord. Forty days, Ninevites. Forty days. How do you respond? I remember when I hit the altar that morning. And I prayed, I didn't turn around and say, God, keep me the same. I said, God, make me like you. Redeem me. I repent. Forgive me for my actions. I'm not going to sit here and try to even dare say that it's been perfect. I have not been perfect. But God didn't require me to be perfect. He just wants me to respond to him, to have faith in him, to receive his mercy and his grace by committing my life to him. And in that, he has made me perfect. Not by actions, but because I've been covered by the blood of the Lamb. That God doesn't see those sins anymore. And that's what this message is all about. God providing mercy to those who are truly repentant those who are truly sorry and want to be in the relationship with God. Would you pray with me? Father, repentance is not an easy thing because it means that we have to say we're sorry. And it's not something that we can say sorry once because we do make mistakes. We do sin. We still... We, we still find our ways in the fish instead of in Nineveh. But Lord, this morning I pray that if there's anyone in here this morning that has gone on a wayward journey, gone on their own 
way of doing things, their own will, their own directions, their own life. And they've been listening and they've been hearing, not from me, but from you, saying it's time for you to come out of the fish. It's time for you to come out and, and, and follow my will. I pray that this is the morning that they do it. I pray that this is the morning that they go to the altar. Whether physically or spiritually, we make our way to the altar and we say, I'm tired of doing it my way. I repent of my way. I, I put on the spiritual sackcloth that says, I'm taking off everything that I've made of me and putting on everything that is made of you. And I want you in my life, Lord. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here this morning that, that you've been talking to and that they want to respond, that they respond to you. That they say, a, they say a prayer, and if they don't know the words to say, I, I, I can say one. It's not the words that matter. It's the heart. So if anyone wants to pray these words this morning, again, it's not the words that matter. It's the heart, but I... I I hope that you'll pray along these words. You don't have to pray them out loud. But along with your heart to say, God, I've walked away from you. I've decided to do my will and not yours. But I hear you talking. And I'm ready to respond. Thank you for Jesus for giving me my sins, but I need your forgiveness. I repent. I change. And I want to live with you. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I want you to hear these words. In 1 John it says, for those who ask for forgiveness, he is faithful to forgive. You are redeemed this morning. For those who want repentance and turn to God, you have received it, not by me, but by him. Lord, let us leave a, lead a life of repentance lead a life of redemption and lead a life of righteousness through your son Jesus Christ today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you all stand and join us in singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms found on page 575.
Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord. Lord, thank you for your salvation, Jesus, and thank you for your mercy and your grace, Jesus. Jesus, I pray that you would protect us as we leave this place. Allow us to see you new and fresh this week, Father. Father, lead us back here on next Sunday, Lord. We praise you and thank you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.